Okay, let's come to order. Welcome to our work session for June. Questions on the agenda? Okay, on the consent agenda. Seven, I guess you want to do on Thursday, Mr. Gill? Yes, sir. Takes us to eight. Uh, financial matters. General Purpose Schools 2010-2011 budget amendment. Uh, this amendment budgets a $5,000 donation to account 44570 for Smyrna West Alternative School and the related 5000 for computers, account 71150-790. The amendment also reallocates seven thousand dollars to other student support clerical staff. Account seventy two one thirty dash one sixty two for special ed bus aids. Account seventy two one thirty dash one sixty four to cover anticipated expenditure for clerical staff. And we we'll recommend that you amend five thousand <coughs> donations from the West Alternative School and related five thousand computer expenditures, and to amend seven thousand to other support staff. Uh, clerical staff and special ed bus aides as presented. Grant, what was the source of the donation? Uh, you, you uh, books from birth, wasn't it? Remember they were in here last oh, okay. time and we had the yeah. drawing? Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Other questions? That reminded me, didn't you have a bus safety committee? I'm not sure we ever heard the final report. Yeah, we, uh, that, uh, we uh, actually, that. some of that's going in the handbook, I believe. Some of it in policy. James, James Angel, not paying attention. Did you hear that? No, right Dr. Burns said, you know, what's the status of the bus uh, safety committee? We actually met on not too long ago. Again. Angel and I got the first copy of the uh, video that we asked the SROs to put together. Uh, we've asked them to make a few tweaks to it. They'll have it back to us sometime this summer. Uh, there are a number of things going into the handbook, including the rewritten bus code of conduct. That's, that's done now, right? It reflects exactly what the, the same code of conduct that's within a school, so that it mirrors it for both the bus setting and for a school setting, so it's easier for principals to know exactly, you know, first offense or this type of behavior results in these types of discipline uh, referrals. Uh, so the principals were very excited about that. Good change. It's much more simple. It's also similar for students because they understand because they, you know, it gets discussed so much in the school setting. Um, what am I missing? Uh, we're also putting together some training uh, for bus drivers, when they, drivers and contractors, uh, just in terms of, of management, student management. Um, we're working on that now. The special ed department has their behavior specialists have helped us put together uh, a training program using some clear transportation so that we present in the fall to schools. But you really. You're not going any farther with the idea of having aids on the buses. I mean, that's really what made me think of this issue. I mean, that was a pretty expensive proposition. Wasn't yeah, I mean, it? that was the issue, just finances. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know that you could find people to serve in that capacity. I don't want to mislead people with respect to that we have a real interest in doing. I mean, I think it might be advisable to explore, but I know Jeff had put toward with some numbers that it was, you know. Mm. You know, we have. We ended with 216 buses. Um, about a fourth of those are special ed buses, roughly. Is that right? They already have two people on those buses, right. but that's a lot of positions to fill for part time, you know, three to four hours mm -hmm. a day. That was one that, other than the cost, that was the other obstacle, was finding the type of people that you would want to be on the buses. Uh, but it's always an option. You just have to find a way to pay for it and find a way to, you know, find those people. You, you when have you have that parents who would like to volunteer, but yeah. that's the ones you don't want on there. <laughs> Yeah. The parents who have parents of kids that are on there. Yeah, sure. I mean, there's certain liabilities with that, too. Right. Well, was there some discussion about using aids only on, say, high school or middle school or high school? It seems like we, we had, had some brief discussion with the SROs about doing kind of like a security team that could be moved around. Maybe SROs were on the bus, and the SROs weren't very uh, open to that idea. It felt like it was kind of outside of their jurisdiction to do that kind of thing. Uh, that's as far as we went with that part of it. Well, sorry to spring that on you, but that 
That does give us a bit of an update, and it was just something that. Uh, and if the board of Mr. Gill would like us to continue looking at that, we have to do that. So. Not necessarily. I was just. I mean, I know it was something we had discussed here, and I didn't remember the final resolution of it. It's one of those things that. If something were to happen after you know after the fact, people said, "Well, why didn't you follow up on that?" And that's the danger. Uh, you know. Anybody else have any thoughts on that? Was well, anybody talk with the the sheriff about it? You know, I mean, of course, you got the S SROs himself, but uh, obviously he he uh, is somewhat their boss, is he not? We discussed yeah, it with the SRO commander. Who discussed it? Okay. Part of the issue, the big issue with having them do it is that you're going to run into paying overtime for them because they'll be doing duty after their normal hours, and so that becomes a funding issue as well. Um, so I think we explored many options, but thus far, none of those have, have panned out yet. So we also talked about using some grant funding, and we haven't been able to locate any grants that would pay for that sort of service. So we've kind of explored all options at this point. Okay. You, you were talking about getting overtime. What 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 are their hours, or how's that figured on the SROs? They may have had some changes since that first started. At the sheriff's department. Pardon? At the sheriff's department. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know how they structure their hours, but when we discussed it with them about having teams that would come in and, and do those uh, right. morning and afternoon routes, it, they said that that would create a problem with them because their their officers are already assigned a regular work week. So if we add hours to that, they would be be paying over one of us would be paying overtime. I believe their shifts pretty much mirror the school day, so they're they're already working a full day as it is. You know, they go from there the bus the bus routes would be added on top of that. I don't know if it'd, it'd be exceed more than eight hours, would it? Well, well first of all there's only about how many SROs? Probably only forty, forty five in the whole system that wouldn't cover wouldn't cover it, yeah. 170 buses. There might be a start. Okay, thanks. B, general purpose schools, the 2011-2012 budget change. The flowing change is needed in the 2011-2012 general purpose school budget in order to handle the fingerprinting contract with the L1 Identity Solutions, Solutions, which was awarded the state bid. Mercer County Schools will hire two part-time staff members to operate the fingerprinting office at the Maintenance Adult Education Building. L1 will pay us $3 for each successful fingerprint processed here. This $3 payment should cover the pay and benefits of our part-time employees. Uh, additional revenue, other local revenue, $44,990 will be $16,234. Additional expenditures should be the equivalent of $16,234, and we're recommending that you amend the 2011-2012 GPS budget in order to handle a fingerprinting contract with L1 Identity Solutions as presented. We did not do this with the last uh, company, but then again, we weren't, uh, there wasn't $3 reimbursement to the school system either. So, at the end of the day, you know, this potential here to make, perhaps even make a little money according to Mr. Sandbeck. Discussion. Later in the agenda, it points out, if I'm not mistaken, that L1 is the only state approved vendor for this service. I think that's right, Ms. Barnes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who are we moving from? And did they lose their approval or? Yes. Yeah. <coughs> A company named Cogent has had the same bid for several years, about three or four years now. And they lost the bid to L1 Identity Solutions. And that company is going to take over on August 1st. But we just received notification this past week of that changeover and the need to make some adjustments so that we could continue to keep our fingerprint site here at Rutherford County. Okay. So they needed documentation from us immediately that said we wanted to continue to host this site and would be able to provide the employees with them paying us and reimbursing us for the number of clicks, they call it, for people purchase fingerprint. So the bid and the contract and everything is, is not so much a Rutherford County, no, no, we're just TBI. a site. The TBI. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Nine. Transportation. <clears throat> Pursuant to policy 1-41, bus contract award procedures, 
The new contractor list for the 2011-2012 school year are presented for approval. These four lists, first priority is regular bus drivers, second priority part-time or sub-drivers, third priority those who have turned down the opportunity, and fourth list those who currently own one or more contracts are in order to facilitate the awarding of new bus contracts on a timely basis for the beginning of the new school year and thereafter as contracts are turned in to the transportation <coughs> department throughout the year. And we recommend that you approve the potential first, second, third priority contractors list and the fourth list of current contractors for the 2011-2012 school year. This is all pursuant to policy. Discussion? We've had a lot of discussion about these lists over the years. I can't believe there's not going to be one question or comment. <clears throat> Maybe we should move on before there is one. <laughs> I'd say we must Get be knowledgeable. Now. <laughs> Maybe yeah. that's it. Okay, uh, 10. Uh, revised policy, second, final reading. How you want to handle this? Uh, we, I don't think we need to discuss it. We've uh, seen it twice already. Anybody have any questions on the policies? We took we took one <coughs> off and referred it back to the policy committee at our last meeting. Might be worth noting that if anyone is interested in anything on this agenda, they can check out our website right. page. And, uh, it's it's all reflected there. And our entire entire policy manual is online too, and we right. put a lot of effort into trying to get that into shape. So it's a good resource for people. Eleven. I don't know what that is. Is that? Yeah, uh, we've got uh, obviously with the change in the uh, law pertaining to uh, negotiations and collective bargaining, we've got some recommended changes. Uh, that I, we intended to read on Thursday night, or we can do them now and give you some time to mull them over. Either way, uh, might maybe let's. Why don't we do that, Angel? And I've a asked them to separate it in, I think, three separate lists. One is what we're recommending we do with particular items. Second, no change. Third, we just adhere to state policy. Go ahead, Angel. Uh, when Miss Barnes gave me an update a few weeks ago on the new collective conferencing. Law. Um, she explained a little bit about the fact that there are some items that will be covered by collective conferencing, some items that are already covered in state law and won't need to be covered in that process. Um, and then there are some items that um, are prohibited, strictly prohibited, from being a part of collective conferencing. So what she has done over the past week or so is go through our contract and look at each item to see which category they fall into. Um, and what we've discovered is that there are several items, and I'll go over that list with you, that, that we may need to look at in policy changes now because they are things that are not covered anywhere else and would stop as of June the 30th for our teachers if we don't do something now. Those items are um, bereavement leave for teachers, their option to take an advancement on their first salary installment and their pay, supplements for coaches and sports, administrator's index, um, credit for experience, salary increases for new degrees, and professional days for school improvement. So those items that are currently granted in our contract and our negotiated agreement are not covered in state law or any of our policies. So as of June 30th, when our contract expires, they would, would be no more. Um, so what, what we put together and recommended is that we set a policy meeting date, which we've set, so that you can look at these items included in a policy that would take effect immediately <coughs> so those things would continue. Um, at this point. Other areas of the contract that are covered under state law and don't necessarily need to be addressed immediately are duty-free lunch, planning time, class size, um, other leaves other than bereavement, teacher evaluations, and sick bank. Those are already written in state law and won't, nothing will change in terms of those. Um, the two items that would be or could be an item for collective conferencing that we currently have in our contract are the grievance process um, and payroll deduction for union dues. The payroll deduction for union dues at this point is prohibited from collective conferencing. Now we believe that at some point there will be a distinction in a portion of the dues that can be collected and a portion that cannot. So until that happens we, we need to stay away from that one anyway. Um, and the grievance process that's currently in our contract is only in the contract to give them an opportunity to grieve 
items that are in the contract. So once the contract expires, there really will be no need for that grievance process until we have a new memorandum, memorandum of understanding, and then we may want to include that in, as a part of that process. In the meantime, they will still have access to our complaint procedure and could pursue a complaint you know, in any way under that procedure. So the grievance process just specifically addressed items in the contract, which, which won't be applicable after June 30th. Okay, Tim. Uh, as I was reading through either Tennessee or DNJ, I'm not sure which, I'm not sure is even re referenced in our county, but talking about faculty meetings, the number of faculty meetings you can have, how much notice has to be done and so forth, where does that fall into this category? That's not in our contract currently, is it, Paul? It is. It is. Contract. There is some language that addresses faculty meetings where we identified um, the link not to exceed an hour and the number of meetings per month, and if that's something that, that the board wishes us to look at also. Maybe in procedures, I'm not sure they would be necessarily following policy, but maybe as a procedure. I don't think we can <coughs> change any of that status. Uh, Mr. Gill, we talked about that, but it could be addressed in procedures. The items that we felt like we needed to address in policy pretty quickly, are the ones that I gave you, are really tied to some sort of money. Um, so, you know, in terms of keeping those things um, in place for teachers. Well, but when we ultimately have the collective conferencing, is that something that would be discussed, the kind of thing that Ms. Tackett just brought up? Absolutely. be brought up to the table by the teacher groups. <laughs> but in the interim, we're no longer bound by the current contract, and I'm, I'm sure what he's getting at is that we don't want principals running in there and start holding right. faculty. I, 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 I guess what I would like to see us be able to do is, is, is stay as status quo as we were before, and even things that, that I'm not sure that we're privy to or, or, or the public's not as far as what was being negotiated before that we're not bound to follow anymore. But if there were some things that were fairly much agreed upon prior to that situation, I, I think from the standpoint of good faith, as close to those as we can, can do, uh, I would very much like to see us do those things and, and try to, to be as fair about that process as we can be. And I really think those are the, those two things or two of the few that we didn't mention that were in the contract. Our contract was, was pretty small and it did not include a lot of things that we're going to have to deal with separately. So I think we could probably handle that through procedure. We can certainly. Yeah. And yeah we'll, as I say, my, my, my voice is just simply, I, I'd, I'd like to see that handled in such a way that uh, there, there's no changes or no large changes, or if there are going to be any changes to that, that we at least are aware of what those are and have some opportunity to speak to them. So, well, I think it's a good point. So you've gone through the contract yes, line sir. by line to make sure <clears throat> all of that stuff is covered somewhere. Is that yes, that's sort yeah, of what you're doing? We tried to look at the ones that affect okay. employees directly related to funding to make sure we covered those before the beginning of the year because they have the greatest impact. But even things like this that are not related to money, we want to make sure that we cover somehow so that they're uh, yeah, I, I think Tim's got a really good point there. We want to We've said all along we weren't trying to use this episode to, you know, harm the teachers in any way. So I think we want to make sure we follow up. I was going to comment that it's, it's been pretty quiet, and uh, you know I was expecting some folks that had had talked to me earlier to come back, but they I don't know if they're if they're satisfied or in shock or or they're just getting rallying the troops. But uh, um, maybe maybe things weren't as bad as they thought they were going to be, and I think we've obviously have been open with the things that we've discussed in the state too and saying we're not trying to take advantage of anyone so right. hope that's the case Me too. other discussion or questions okay thank you number 12 rutherford county executive committee meeting this is just an fyi uh, the rutherford county executive committee had an emergency meeting on june the 9th 2011 and approved the systems contract with L1 Identity Solutions. On June the 8th, 2011, we were notified that the contract with L1 Identity Solutions had to be approved by June the 9th so that the changeover could be complete by August 1st, 2011. L1 Identity Solutions was awarded the state contract for fingerprint services and the only state approved vendor. Discussion? A general discussion. I heard one comment this past week, I heard, read it, um, that I wanted to kind of ask about. Um, 
and it and it questioned whether or not and, and at what level we allow parents uh, interaction and voluntary participation in the schools and I was wondering if I could get clarification on that yeah we actually visited that <clears throat> I guess it was last fall or the fall before last and came up with the procedure that was put in place uh, I don't remember all the all the particulars uh, you want to give a kind of a short summary and one or two things did generate a little bit of I don't know uh, I wouldn't say controversy but some people a few were unhappy but it was uh, what we did was one to protect instructional time in the classroom and secondly always being mindful that you know we have security issues when people are in the hallways that aren't students or teachers so we have you know let's be mindful of that but anyway go ahead Angel. Uh, the two two issues we were facing when Mr. Gill looked at developing the procedure, the first one was that we had a, a large number of outside agencies, counseling services, um, in-home case management services that were coming to schools more and more frequently and wanting to pull kids out of class to do counseling type things or home studies, those kinds of things. Um, and typically those things are on, 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 a, are on an ongoing basis, so it would be weekly, you know, sometimes. Um, for students and principals continue to call and complain that they were losing valuable instruction time because these kids were being pulled out of class on a regular basis and it tended to be the same class because they were coming at the same time of the day. Um, the second problem that we were hearing uh, repeatedly from principals was that, was that more and more parents were coming and making requests to just sit in a classroom and do an observation. Uh, and then you also have outside agencies who want to come in and do observations as well. So what we did was put a procedure in place that said that we would not just allow people from outside agencies or parents to come in and do observations, not to discourage volunteers and those kinds of things, but that needed to be approved by the teacher and run through the office so that everybody knew who was coming and when and who was in the building, rather than people just stopping by and saying, I want to sit in today. Um, and so we've obviously had a few complaints about that since we put it into place, primarily from the outside agencies who it's just more convenient to come to school to do it than it is to try to catch them after school hours. Um, but after that first initial few months, we've not had a lot of complaints about it, and principals are very, very pleased that they're not having to, to, to encounter that difficulty. Aaron, does that answer your question? Well, the context of what I saw was, you know, about the uh, – parent academy that uh, you know we're starting to kind of discuss and, and push out there a little bit and and it was uh, well, a comment that said aren't parents not allowed into any of the classrooms isn't that the circumstance right now what's parent academy going to do and you know we haven't put out there all of what parent academy is going to do and quite honestly it's still kind of in development but you know the impression that the public might have that they're not welcome in the classroom I guess is not totally accurate because we're saying that there is a procedure that the teacher can approve and then the principal sign off and the parent is welcome in the classroom. Right. Teachers are still encouraged to have volunteers they're just scheduling them now so that we know when people are coming and it's being reported and run through the principal so that we don't just have people coming by on a random basis and we don't I mean what we really targeted with that procedure was to just stop a parent coming in and just sitting in a classroom for an hour period of time to observe their child or, or any other child and that's something that we have to keep in mind as well so you know welcome participation and volunteer and you know aiding teachers and those kinds of things but trying to maintain that instructional time just as best we can excellent my question has been answered she did job <laughs> Are you at a issue? <clears throat> yeah, I had a uh, discussion this morning with, uh, with Dr. Ash at Central Magnet and also uh, Coach Buddy Powers, uh, one I just soon not had, but the fact is it needed to be had. Uh, originally, we opened up Central Magnet. We said we'd offer as best possible the same extracurricular activities, including sports, as other schools had. We also originally thought that we'd be able to use, uh, I believe it's called Oakland Park, which is adjacent to Oakland Mansion. And uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, unfortunately for us in Central Magnet, that's probably not going to be uh, doable anymore. I think they're going to take, uh, perhaps tear that down, and plant trees and, and do something with some uh, money former Congressman uh, Bart Gordon uh, secured for them. Also, we last spring discussed going to uh, the VA 
and allowing the baseball team to play out there, but that doesn't look like, that's just not doable anymore. Which brings us to what Central Magnet's options are. Uh, <clears throat> You know, we say in Miss Barnes and uh, who else? Three or four of us discussed it a little bit today. And Miss Tackett was principal at Oakland, but if you say, well, we'll let you play your games at Oakland or Seagull or Riverdale, that's, that, doesn't, that doesn't work. I mean, those fields are in constant use. Uh, when the Oakland varsity baseball team done, the JV will play or the freshman will play, or somebody's always working on the field. And, I think you can make the case, or we can make the case, that every high school we've opened up has had a sports complex or some place to play sports. And where I'm going with this is, uh, I'm gonna go with Coach Powers in the morning, and, and I, if Mr. Clark is back, I'm hoping he could go. But to look at an area over in Blackman and maybe building a ballpark over there where they got a place to play. You know, I know that's the last thing the county commission's gonna to wanna to hear, or school board, or anyone else, but I don't know that we have another solution uh, to building them a place to play baseball. I mean, first of all, they're going to have a varsity team, they're going to have a JV team, they're going to have a 7th, 8th grade team, they may have a freshman team. I think it'd be in constant use. There's no place to build it in Central. I don't think, one, we have any land, uh, land enough, and secondly, I doubt the historic commission would uh, I'm still mad about the fence. Can you imagine building a ballpark? Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I just want to forewarn you that we'll, we'll be looking for something. And also, I've told them to start looking, see if they can start generating some funds to help out, although we've paid for everything in the past. How about, uh, how about uh, Starplex? We used to use Starplex. Uh, Where is that? How about State Farm? I, I know. Uh, we used to play baseball out there when it was over at Central. Uh, middle school, city was good about working with you. Yeah. And the girls softball uh, played out at McKnight. Uh, city, was, city was ideal. Uh, the city was uh, ideal with the out there. Uh, uh, I know the girls league out there, the Kiwanis league, that plays out there at McKnight. Uh, we would schedule mm -hmm. around. And it really didn't get, didn't get into the schedule a whole lot because a lot of times their games were over with before the league games started. Plus, uh, they started so much earlier in the season than the regular league did. So you may meet with uh, Lanny out there with the city and okay. they were good to work with. So. I, think they, I think they have met with them, and, but, but I'll, I'll pass that on. We'd rather really do something like that if, if at all possible. Well, the issue you'll have there, if, 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 it's, if it's doable at all, and I suspect you're probably going to have to move that fence back. I, I don't think there's a park out there that would really fit what a high school would need to do. And I'm not saying that it's not possible to be a, a better option, a cheaper option than, than starting from scratch to, mm -hmm. to find ways to, to, to maybe regrade, add another 15, 20 feet out that way. But I, I think field, it's field five. The big field. It's the big field, yeah. and uh, it, it, it's not going to hold a high school. Uh, I don't, I don't know, but, but it's, it's. I think it's it's worth looking at, for sure. But they played all their games on the road last year, uh, and they obviously, unless something's done, they're going to do the same thing this year. Where does softball play? I'm not sure. A lot more options. You know, Paul. Well, I, I don't. A lot more options though for softball, I mean, because you don't need it such a big. Yeah. Okay, well, so keep us posted on yeah, what. I just want to kind of lay that out. Yeah, appreciate that. Other discussion? We'll see you Thursday night, and we're adjourned.